Hey friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Becca and I am so glad that you are here. For those of you who are new to the channel, we focus on all things First Chapter Friday for your favorite middle grade novels. Today that novel is going to be The House Swap by Yvette Clark. I am super excited to dive into this first chapter with you and see if this is something we are interested in reading. We're going to start by reading the front inside cover, which will give us a little idea what this novel is about. Allie and Sage would not be friends, even if they didn't live 5,000 miles apart. Allie is a middle child leaving, living in a sleepy English village who dreams of being a spy. Sage, an only child from Los Angeles, is more interested in her crystal collection than cracking codes. Though they have nothing in common, their worlds collide when their parents agree to a house swap. Allie's family will spend their vacation at Sage's house in sunny California, while Sage and her mom will stay at Allie's cottage in England. When the girls meet, it doesn't take super spy skills to see that Sage is worried about the tension between her parents. Determined to fix things, the girls hatch a complicated plan. But while Allie is pulling strings in Sage's family, she's struggling to feel heard in her own, with her obnoxious older brother and annoying younger sister taking up all her parents' time. It just may take a trip halfway around the world for Sage and Allie to find their place at home. All right, very interesting. Can you imagine, I'm gonna just fix that camera a little. Can you imagine a house swap switching homes with someone from another country? Interesting. All right, we are gonna dive on into that first chapter and it appears that this book is structured so that each chapter is coming from the perspective of either Sage or Allie. So part one is titled Home, and I imagine that means that both characters are in their respective homes. And chapter one is from Allie's perspective. Now, a couple things I wanna point out is the chapter starts with telling us whose perspective it's written from, uh, tells you where she is, and then it gives a little quote before it dives on in. Okay, so I will read that all to you. Chapter one, Allie is at Kringle Cottage or Ox Oxfordshire, England. I knew it, middle child syndrome is officially a thing. I sent my parents an article about it that I found on the Good Parents Make Great Kids website. They haven't read it from my diary. All right, let's dive in. The fingerprint in the talcum powder I sprinkled on the handle of my desk drawer this morning proves it. Someone has been going through my stuff. I read about the talcum powder technique in a book called Think Like a Spy that I found at the school library. Miss Leonard said I could keep it for the summer, even though I already had the maximum number of books checked out. I take a picture with my phone and zoom in on the print, but I can't tell if it is a loop or a whirl. Think Like a Spy says there are three main types of fingerprint patterns, the loop, the whirl, and the arch. I have an arch print. It's the rarest kind. Only 5% of the population has it, so the arch is the worst type of print to have if you are a criminal. I don't plan on being a criminal. I want to be a spy. I doubt having arch fingerprints is a barrier to becoming a spy. My sister Willow has a loop print. I know that because I took her fingerprints last week. I suggested that we make a handprint painting of chickpea, nestle, and nugget to decorate their hen house. I could tell that mom was surprised that I'd volunteered to do something with my little sister for a change. Surprised and pleased because Willow is a lot of work. Willow pressed her palm onto a plate covered with white paint and pushed it down onto a pale blue piece of paper to make the chicken's body. Then she painted a yellow beak at the side of her thumbprint, added a red crest at the top of the thumbprint, and drew tiny eyes, legs, and feet with a black marker. She was very proud of it. The picture's not on the wall of the chicken inn yet because Willow's taking it around the village to show everyone whether they want to see it or not. I'm not sure how I'm going to get my brother's prints, but I'll think of something. It will, just, it will be just my luck if Max has a loop print too. He probably does because it's the most common type. 
His prints will be much bigger than Willow's, though, so it should be easy to tell them apart. I took Mum and Dad's prints, too. They're both whirls. I wonder if you are more likely to marry someone who has the same fingerprint type as you. Maybe I should try to get Toby South's prints when we get back to school. How would I even do that? Imagine if he caught me trying to get his prints from his locker. I'd die. Even dogs have prints. Not on their paws, though. On their noses. Bear didn't seem to mind me taking his nose print at all. I think he liked the taste of the food coloring I used to do it. He kept licking it off, so it took a long time to get a clear print. I can't decide who the number one suspect for snooping around in my desk drawer is, Max or Willow. They both have their reasons to go through my stuff. Max to find something he could use to embarrass or blackmail me with, like my diary, as if I'd ever risk keeping my diary in our house with a brother like him. And Willow, because she is a thief, which my parents don't seem concerned about for some reason. Well, she didn't actually take anything, Dad said, after I caught Willow trying to crack the combination box on combination lock on my money box. Only because she couldn't get it open? Why aren't you and Mom worried about this? Did you even read that article I gave you? After I found the calligraphy set that I got for my birthday under Willow's pillow a few weeks earlier, I printed out an article called, Is My Child a Kleptomaniac? from the Good Parents Make Great Kids website and presented it to mom and dad. Actually, I did read it, and it said that it's a completely normal phase for a six-year-old, dad said. Relax. Also, did you sign me up for more newsletters from that website? I keep getting random emails from them. I don't think it's a completely normal phase, and I hate it when people tell me to relax. Maybe I could relax if my parents paid a bit more attention to what my brother and sister get up to. Maybe then I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have had to sign them up for the Good Parents Make Great Kids newsletter. Mom and Dad believe in free-range parenting, which is good for our chickens, but not for my siblings. As well as their generally casual approach to parenting, Mom and Dad didn't seem to give much thought to naming their kids. I guess Allegra is slightly better than Willow, but weirdly, the name suits her. I don't know what name would suit me, but it's definitely not Allegra. 50 babies born in England last year were named Allegra, which is 50 too many if you ask me. Thank goodness everyone calls me Allie. Well, everyone except Max, because he knows I hate being called Allegra. I asked mom what on earth they were thinking when they gave me that name. Allegra is a gorgeous name, Allie, she said looking offended. It was always the top of our list, wasn't it, Agnes? I dread to think what else was on that list. Mom takes it really personally that I don't love my name, even though I'm the one who's stuck with it. I pointed out that she and dad mostly call me Allie, except when they're annoyed with me and call me by my full name, Allegra Iris Greenwood, like when I won't play with my sister. I wonder if anyone got a restraining order against a six-year-old. Allegra is the name of an allergy medicine, Max said. Side effects include being boring, annoying, boring, and stupid. Actually, it means joyful, Mum said. Max snorted. I think I might be allergic to my brother, and there's no medicine for that. Anyway, Allie, Mom said, ignoring Max, we wanted to give you a beautiful and unusual name. There were so many Emmas in my class that at least five people answered whenever the teacher said Emma, so I had to be called Emma V. Only one of us got to be just Emma. But she ended up being called just Emma, so Emma V was probably better. Allegra is unusual, Dad said. Just not beautiful, Max said, smirking. It really suits you, Allegra. Shut up, Maximilian Constantine, I said, which wiped the annoying smirk off his face. He hates being called Maximilian, especially if I add his middle name. You shut up. You suck. You suck more. I punched his arm. Idiot. He kicked my leg. Loser. Mom rolled her eyes. She always says that we'll grow out of our bickering eventually and become great friends. We won't. All right, that is the end of the first chapter of House Swap. I apologize for those naughty words there at the end. Oh my goodness. Um, but you're all middle schoolers, right? I think you've heard those words before. Anyway, that is, that is the end of the first chapter. And like I said, the second chapter picks up from Sage's perspective, who is over in Los Angeles. Um, all right, very interesting to see um, 
something that I think is relatable to many of us, which is siblings and how tricky they can be sometimes and, and parents too, right? All right. I'm very curious to see where this book goes from here. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It makes me super happy. And I genuinely see every single person who views these videos. So thank you for watching. Um, if you are reading this with your class teachers, there is a link in the description to a first chapter Friday handout to follow along. All right, everyone, stay tuned. More first chapter Friday read alouds to come. Until next time, happy reading.